So thanks uh, for coming on. Before it's, we go on, Peter, how are you feeling? Sorry. I'm grand, yeah, no news. <laughs> no, no biological no concerns. No, nothing. <laughs> Did I tell you about my hernia? <laughs> um, so we basically, we're trying to NDA on that. We can't speak about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I've, you've you've both separately. Oh, that's actually funny. You've both separately been on the show before and recorded yep. the same day in the same place, but two separate recordings. Darina, please, I'm trying to talk. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, this is war. <laughs> no, do you want to go there, Peter? Um, I ha I, so I don't know where to start because so much, so much stuff has happened. Um, Your hernia. Guess, <laughs> I'll start with Bua, I think, um, because Bua has gone from CrossFit. So you've moved, you moved before we recorded the last time, uh, Jamie, and you were in Santry and you were settling in and you had had, you know, an open announcement there and things were like kind of ratcheting up and like going well, you know, business was good, life was good. Um, and then you bought like 400 or you took over like 400 other facilities. Uh, you're, you're just like taking over. I, what, what was the thought process between, uh, so like when you have one facility, I have, I guess, two questions. One, why open more? And two, why open existing facilities and not be like, right, I know exactly what I'm doing and how to do it. So let's start from scratch. So I have a blank slate. Like why take over something that's already existing as opposed to starting your own place? I am sorry. I'm going to quieten the dogs, Jamie. You work away. I apologize. Yeah. So uh, the, the first part of the question, um, I had never intended to go to two facilities. I always wanted to do one really well. Um, then I went and spent a bit of time with Jason Kaliba a few years ago. And, you know, he obviously has multiple everything. Mm -hmm. So um, I went over just to learn what I could from him. And in the process, he ended up convincing me that multi-site was better than single site. And he wasn't trying to, he just, just the rationale for why multi-site is good. I, I came away from that conversation, like, you know, when someone changed your mind on something, and it was obvious to me that there were benefits from having multiple locations that a single can't achieve. So that was like, oh, that opened my eyes. Um, I could what, see that. What, what, kind of, what kind of benefits do you think? Like what I'd say at the top, so, like two or three. Um, so first of all, uh, I love working with teams and uh, there's only so many people a single location can hire. And once you go to multiple, um, you just have way more people, way more expertise in every room you go into. So therefore, uh, the expertise level comes up, the collaboration goes up, the ideas come up. And more good people adds to higher a higher bar for everybody so uh, i hadn't thought of it like that um the other thing as well like from if you join a boo gym you can go to any of them and just having that flexibility uh some people train in one location when they're at home and another when they're after work um so they're like like simple things but there's multiple on top of that um so I came away going, all oh, right, okay. So uh, I always had the impression that if you go to two, it kind of waters down product and might make it worse. Yeah. And that flipped it on its head for me. Um, so that was that was cool. Now that was back in 2018 or 19. So um, the plan really was in 2019 to open a second one. And then we got sanctioned to Filthy 150. And that you know took over my life for the, for the year, to be honest with you. So we at, took a when, when you say when you say open a second one was at that point was it like start from fresh open a second one or was the idea always yep. to be like scope around existing places? Yeah, no, I never had that real idea of um, <clears throat> of taking over somewhere else. It was always open a second one. Um, but one once filthy came in, like like Christopher, you know, manager here as well, and he was heavily involved in filthy one fifty. Our bandwidth got taken up by that. So. Um, once, once that got, uh, we had that year done, and then lockdown happened like three months after the last filthy. Believe it or not, um, yeah, it's bad. then after that, it was like uh, we're we're beyond ready. Like we're definitely ready to do a second one. So I would like to come out of the the lockdowns, yeah, uh, with with two. That was the plan. And um, so we we 
I investigated, I had a look around. Nace looked like a great area, loads of people. Um, you know, I was lucky enough to get a great building and fit it out and we're, we're ready to go then when the lockdowns ended. So that was great. So that, that, was, that was why I expanded. Uh, well, I think, Jimmy, yeah, you, yeah no, the one, the reason you said to me you expanded <laughs> is completely different. Maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I remember when we were having a conversation um, about you wanting to expand. And to be honest with you, I was quite against it because with gyms, there's not that economy of scale. Um, it's not like in other businesses where you have that. Um, so I was kind of, do you want to do it? And I remember him saying to me, it's like, we have really good people. Um, we have to be able to give them promotional opportunities or you can't expect them to stay stagnant. Hmm. Um, and I remember that being your main driver. And to be honest with you, I remember when in saying that when Christopher was able to buy a house um, in, in Scaries, I remember you being really excited about that. Probably more than Christopher, <laughs> if the truth be known, because you're in a position because of the way you were setting up the gym to be able to support coaches to have careers. So I think yeah, that was one, your main driver now. For, well, what I saw yeah, one, anyway. One thing about CrossFit gyms, they tend to be very flat, you know, they have like a, an owner and then coaches. And if you're a really good coach, there's nowhere to go, uh, only to go out and start your own gym. And then you go from someone who's in the business to someone who's maybe a competitor even. And uh, so to create depth, um, we said it would be nice to be able to move up a scale within a gym, but then have multiple sites so you could have a leadership team that sits above any individual gym. So there's a, like a director team, a leadership team, a like director of training, director of coach development, that sort of stuff. So multiple locations creates revenue that could potentially create an organization that has some depth in it. That was the thinking. And that's been working pretty well so far. Um, when uh when did the opportunity or the idea come to go from two to three then uh that was um so the opportunity came up like uh, i mean <clears throat> I, I i knew lorna for years um and lorna was one of the very first boxes we opened around a similar time um and uh i just when it came up it made sense to me because we were doing nice and we we're like if I'm doing all these processes for one, we could do them for two at the same time. And I knew that the, the, the long-term vision was, was for six long, long term, like 10 years. Um, so we went, uh, I just went and explored it. And do you know something, just a lot of the, the great things you want to see in a gym were in place and it just came down to then, can you, can you work out a deal? Can you make it all happen? You know, uh, alongside the new gym opening and, uh, Guess we just made the bet we could and went for it and a uh, brilliant brilliant decision I'm delighted with it because that is a that's a magnificent gym like it's just those people are there forever the people have been training there and the culture exists and they're across the gym true and true and um they just do a lot of things the same way as we did them so uh, it, it it just integrated very nicely and now you have four yeah yeah, you have so to think there was he like, oh, did we announce the fifth and sixth and seventh one yet? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not commenting. <laughs> so yeah, the, the fourth one uh, is is in Dunlear, County Loud. And, How far away is that? Because uh, the the others are kind of not close, like. But I I guess when you hear the areas, you think geographically that's close. Whereas Loud sounds further away. Is it further away? Not really. Um, okay. So if you imagine. The M50, like you go towards Nace, or you go up to the top of the M50, go towards Dunlear. It's about the same distance off the M50. Okay. Um, so they're they're in a nice little like a uh, easy top half of the M50 to get to, and yeah, so it's fine. And that and, that was know, a an ex a pre-existing gym already as well, wasn't it? Yeah, and that that was unique again. I mean, one of the big challenges for me, honestly, with with CrossFit West Dublin taking over at Lorna's place was, <coughs> and like it's a different leadership challenge, isn't it? Like you've to, go into somewhere who they don't necessarily have any choice in the fact they have to buy into what you do. It's up to me to try and help them buy in, help them move forward in their uh, different approach because there is differences. So that was cool. That was hard. And uh, I, I enjoyed that challenge. And then the one in Dunlear is slightly different again because the owner was someone who was coming to me for just a bit of help 
and he was he was uh, open three years, operating the business, and um, he just liked what we did. And came down, and he was like, I wouldn't mind if you was getting coffee with him regularly just to talk him through things. And it got to a point eventually where it's like, I would love to work in the business and not have to run it anymore. Okay, and uh, which was a really brave decision because like to go from the owner to uh, an employee, it's a, big, it's a big shift. But I mean, major credit to him. Uh, he saw that he had, uh, he just needed a bit of support. And uh, once once he got it, that place is absolutely flying now. Um, we're three months in and the whole team stayed on, which was being amazing. They're such a great team. And um, just with a bit of extra support there, they're just going strength, strength. So yeah, I'm delighted with that. And I think like in, in hindsight, when you when you look at doing it that way, it's, it has its challenges, but it's also got its upside as well. So it's just very different, uh, two different sets of challenges. Yeah. Um, how, how long, so you said like 10 years, you want six. I mean, you've only got two more to go and you've done all that in like 12 months, <laughs> they're like 18 months. What, um, have you have you a plan in your head for two more, or has that has that number six changed, or why the number six? Well, our mutual friend Vinny uh, was talking to me like twelve months ago. Um, I, you know, I, I I went to him for help. That guy knows what he's talking about, and he he gave me loads of time. Um, and he said to me at the time, he's like, "You're at you're at three already. You'll be surprised how quickly." four or five and six coming along. And I was like, man, don't talk to me. And uh, he, he wasn't wrong, you know, like it just comes along. So um, no, I'm not actively looking. Um, but if something comes up, I, you know, you look at everything, I guess. And are you, are you thinking of like within the pale or are you thinking of like moving out further into other parts of the country? No idea, honestly. Like, it's it's great if they can um, like so I do two coach development sessions per week for instance that's a practicality where I get the teams together and we spend like 90 minutes on coaching skills amazing sessions love those sessions so we do it in Santry for Dunleer and Santry and then we do it in Nace for Selbridge and Nace um, it would be great if the next one could also get to one of those for instance if they were in or Paris it might be more difficult you know <laughs> yeah glamorous though very glamorous um <laughs> jet setting you have to call it like crossfit jet set or something um yeah so like with boo as well then um one of the things that i've really admired so there's some things that you've done i admire the way the the business is run i admire like the success that you've had because it's not an easy industry to have success like it's it is the people that have those multiple sites and that kind of, they're the outliers. Like, you know, they're not as common as like the people who set up one and then that's it. That's their, and like, you know, some, they might struggle like, and they might, you know, like that they're, it's not like plain sailing basically. So I think as an outlier, it's admirable from my perspective and someone who doesn't know a lot about business or a lot about gyms, but knows how hard it is to run a gym and how hard it is to make it profitable or to, you know, find the right amount to charge your members or to find the right way to deal with members or solve problems and all that kind of stuff. And you've obviously got a proven track record with that considering the expansions and stuff. But as a, I guess, consumer who can't actually consume the product, like I can't actually be there to use it, but as a consumer from online and watching stuff and like content and that kind of stuff, the stuff you put out is incredible. Like you have, I don't know who's, I don't know who does your, my Alexa's going to go off here now. It's after turning on. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I'll just plug it out maybe. Um, I don't know. I don't know who does your social media. Like, I don't know. Is it, I don't know. Whoever it is, or if it's a team of people are fantastic because there's a storytelling element that is often lacking. Like, it's easy to put up a picture of someone or a video or a clip of someone doing something and be like, isn't that fucking cool? Do you know, like, that's easy. Anyone could do that. But, like, to actually tell a story and to get to buy time from someone to click through and to keep clicking and keep watching, or even just the, I know recently you've been putting up videos of people with 
you know, like gymnastics wins and there's a, there's a story behind and I find myself actually giving a shit about who Kira is or who Claire is or whatever, like, and be, becoming invested in it. But then as well, there's like, you put up the kind of workout, you know, the little mini podcasts for, um, members to listen to. And I, like, I haven't listened to one, but I assume it's like, here's the stimulus. Here's what you should be thinking. That kind of like general, like, you know, you've done the workout and now you're talking about it, but the, the pictures that go with it, I'm like, oh man, I don't even know what the fucking workout is and I want to do it. <laughs> it's just like, I'm just like <laughs> buying in from the names and all that kind of stuff. I think like, is when you do stuff like that, when you do like those kind of, um, that kind of creative element of stuff, is part of you like, this is, I don't want to say this is practice because that kind of belittles what Boo is doing, but this is like an opportunity to hone skills for a larger audience when it comes to like filthy and stuff like that. Uh, so in some part, yes. So the daily podcast, for instance, uh, myself and James sit down and that's a really disciplined thing. You know, you have to hit them. Um, and we put a timer on it. We're sub five minutes these days. It's like gotta be sub five. Uh, so we have to do loads of prep for it to get him so five like that so that's a skill and uh for sure i think james is a big podcast listener so am i so um i think we are definitely doing something in the long term until it runs out of steam if it ever does and we're saying in the process we got better at something um the general social media thing like so it used to be James at everything, and now all of the the individual teams and in the, in the different sites do it. So and James tries to coordinate the so it has a feel to it across. And so yeah. we have he's doing a, he's doing an absolutely fantastic job, like see a seriously yeah. good job. Considering he's coaching as well, and he's you know like that, it's not like he's just doing that. Like he's doing, I'd have the work that he's doing there. I didn't know he was doing it, but I'd have the work that he that probably speaks volumes as well. But I'd have the work that he's doing there above like certain training houses that are like hire a specific person to do media for them, like to do social media for them. I think the content he's putting out, like the podcast, I've, I've listened to your longer form uh, or his longer form podcast, mainly the ones that he does with you, to be honest. Um, and they're good and they're enjoyable. But like, it's not easy. It's not easy to do social media. It's not easy to do because it's very different. And it's very hard. And you're like, it's really fucking hard to get someone's attention and to get a click onto it or to get to keep someone long enough to read and stuff. But he's really good at what he does. And it's such a time suck, isn't it? Like it just, it just, it's a black hole for time. So in fairness now, uh, like Brooke and Pa um, and Chris and the other three sites are trying to learn from him. He's trying to do the, the ongoing training with them because they're not natural social media people mm. uh, at all. And they're cursing them, but they're doing, they're taking it on. They're doing a brilliant job. And James has a talent for it. There's no way, no doubt about it. Um, I mean, that guy is getting up at 5 a.m. or 4.30 every morning. He's he's still in work at, at 9 p.m. some days. He's he's working his butt off. Uh, just just hammering on whatever he does he wants to do it really well just like uh, all the lads here so uh, i think he's doing a phenomenal job but at the same time he's never happy he wants to he wants to get it better um okay darina sit up there now you're getting more involved here um so filthy uh the last time we spoke filthy was well there was like sanctionals uh and then it changed to semi-finals and filthy was one of the last events that was on pre like everything being shut off um you had justin medeiros qualified through filthy went on to podium uh in the aromas and since has become you know he's done okay for himself i guess um and i guess there was a period of time there where like was it hard during that time during when you're waiting for like the news of what the season is going to look like and all that kind of stuff um and what's going to happen is it like is your main job there to kind of stay relevant and to stay like the 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 like what people think of when they think of competition and when like is that is that the kind of challenge or is it do you care about that kind of stuff when you're just trying to look ahead and see what you can make happen um I, th I think there's two things when everything 
happened with COVID, we also had the whole CrossFit explosion. And so at that stage there, we were an active part of trying to look what the new season would be like. Hmm. Um, and up until maybe two, three months out, there was discussions about having a very different kind of season. Um, and we put proposals, not just ourselves, but the other sanctionals came together and put proposals um, to to CrossFit um, about what we were thinking um, as a collective within, within the sanctional group. Um, now they decided to go back to their original format, um, but a lot of the inputs that were given by the sanctional crew were taken for that season. So like the last chance qualifier was something that the sanctionals brought to CrossFit. Um, the the series element is something that the sanctional group brought to CrossFit. So uh, although they changed, I, I do think they listened to us in some regard, the, the shorter open and the, the, the three week open rather than the, the long version five week was something that the sanctional group brought to CrossFit. So um, that was something that was very exciting because we felt we were, you know, helping to shape the sport mm. in some way. Um, then obviously COVID happened and the decision was made to do two in Europe and go, go back to a more regional structure, which was fine. Um, and we understood stood the rationale for it. It was hard on us. Um, and I think I felt it was hard on us because I was very proud of the filthy that we put on. But I was also very, very aware that because Ireland is a, is a smaller geography, um, regardless of how good of a job we did, and no matter how good of an RFP we did, which was we to do like a submission, a tender, mm. um, that we weren't probably going to be in the running because there's 100 CrossFits in Ireland. Whereas if you look at the UK, there's 600. Um, so just on a, on a purely commercial standpoint, it was probably going to be going to the UK rather than to Ireland, you know. Um, and that was hard because we really had put so much passion into it into it you know but understood the business rationale behind mm. it you know um and then we as you know we looked at doing something that was a little bit different to try and keep relevant and exciting um you know uh, the, the the team format that we were hoping to do um and I, I was really excited about that and in fairness crossfit were very supportive of that where we were going to have a competition where the training camps competed against each other um at the filthy and we had the sponsors in place, we did backing. Um, we had the teams ready to compete with a really significant prize pot. Um, and unfortunately, Ireland just wouldn't open up. <laughs> so we had done all that work again. Um, and there, some training camps were particularly supportive and really drove drove it home and got other training camps involved, you know. So like to some people that we owe big thanks to, but unfortunately we, we weren't able to pull it together because of COVID. So that happened. Um, again, CrossFit were really supportive, but just one of those things. So then we came to this year. And um, again, Jamie's ETAS has been from 2013 to now. He wouldn't do the filthy if we couldn't do something different each year, you know. Um, so our intention was to do the levels championship. Uh, we had the format lined up. We had the concept in place, approved by CrossFit, ready to go. And unfortunately, um, Punches Town is still sequestered as a vaccination centre. Um, not their fault. They are a great venue and they were really supportive of us and tried to help us as much as they could. But uh, unfortunately, the government is still holding it as a vaccination centre. Now, I don't know whether you've been down there, Peter. They'd even admit it themselves. They may be getting two or three people a day to the venue, um, but um, it's been sequestered till January, so they couldn't release it. Um, so um, we were in a position, okay, Punchestown is the biggest venue in Ireland. We needed something that size to be able to do a dual competition. Um, so then it was a mad scramble to find something else because we couldn't let it go another year without Filthy. Um, before Filthy became this, this international competition, it was um, like the highlight of the CrossFit year in Ireland. And I don't mean to be arrogant by saying that. Uh, and it probably sounds like a dickhead thing to say, and I don't mean that. Um, it was just, it really was, for me even, you know, the, the big thing at the end of the year that we all came together for. So there's no way we could let another year go. Um, we found a, a venue, much to my surprise, which is great, and I didn't even know it was there. Um, we put together a, a really exciting event, Matt agreeing to come over and support us, um, and having the hard work, the trades-off protocol, and what's going to happen at that. We have some really 
really exciting things happening with the whole team, not just Matt. And that will mean that they will be an integral part of the weekend. And Jane will probably speak more to that uh, if he decides he wants to <laughs> in relation to what will be available for affiliate owners and the effect it had on him. Um, so, you know, we're in some ways, I think if we do this right, it could be the best field yet. Maybe not for people who want to see the biggest stars in the world compete, like mm. Sarah, who we had. Um, but um, for someone who really wants the the competition that is a team format, which we've always specialized in, um, I'm pretty confident that people will be surprised, excited, and uh, you know, come away from the event feeling, yeah, they've done something that's uh, really special again. And that's our ultimate aim. Well, it's like <clears throat> there's an element of like gra grassroots to it. Like there's an element of like uh, it's kind of similar to the aromas thing to going back to the aromas where it was like, what can we make happen? Okay, let's make that happen. And then it's like it's like a nod to the nostalgia of what the game started out at. And this is like a nod to the nostalgia of like what Filthy was before the elite athletes <laughs> descended on Punchestown or before like it, the sanctional season and stuff. It's like the team before the community competition the like the same feel the same vibe that made filthy what it was i guess mm. well is. i was am i was amazed peter i have to be honest you're going out and you're thinking okay will people still have an interest um like w we sold out our spectator tickets which didn't even happen when we were the sanctional um over a weekend yeah like i have people on the waiting list now i'm trying to help as much as i can but um, like I have people ring, I'm competing for the first time. Um, I, my husband is coming up from Kinsale. Is there any way he can get a ticket? My son, you know, I was like, okay. Yeah. Um, so it's been amazing. And personally, I, I can't thank the, the Irish CrossFit community enough. They have been incredible. Um, like I was amazed that the tickets sold out like that. The spectators, which we have never sold out, um, sold out in four days. <clears throat> So, you know, which is a, which is great because it knows we've the support of the community, but also pressure because uh, we want to earn that, you know, mm. um, I, I'm really determined and we're very lucky with sponsors as well. Like I thought maybe when we, you know, um, we're going back to our grassroots, as you said, that we would lose some of our more elite sponsors that don't necessarily come to like team of four community events. Um, and that has not been the case. Whoop have stayed firm. Wit will be at the event. We have a new title sponsor. Um, I can. It's it's Jim Plus Coffee here. We're investing very heavily in the event to support us. You know. Um. Right. So, like, um, we like it. Look, we we've bigger sponsors now than we had when we were at the sanctional. Rain, grenade, um. You know. So I, I hybrid academy, the Irish firm, um, Yeti. You know, we've we've been very very lucky. Um. So. Like even the vendor village will be better than the vendor village that was at the um, that was at the sanctional, you know, which right. just seems incredible, you know. Um, and I, I, I'm really excited for that to happen, and uh, because I think, especially when you look at the likes of Wish, maybe a lot of people hadn't got the opportunity to buy from them because of you know Brexit or whatever. So now they'll have their full suite of products there. Um, Jim Plus Coffee are creating a, a new line specifically for. Um, <laughs> for the gym itself, you know, for training rather than coffee. Um, so, uh, you know, and they're, they're launching that at the Filthy. So it's 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 great. It's a, a really exciting time. Yeah, I think Jim, Jim, and Jim plus coffee are going, I think they're going to go, they're working with wit. I was, well, I saw Dan put up like an eyeball thing when someone said Jim plus coffee should yeah. be stocked in wit. And he was like, yeah, we'll see. Um, I wouldn't, let's just say, I wouldn't be overly surprised if that's the case. He may have yeah. been in Ireland with them. Was it, what day was it, Wednesday? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, that it's uh that's great. Uh God, I'm really fucking excited for it now. I was already excited, I'm now I'm more excited. Um the Have you got your spectator ticket? I actually do, yeah. I got one for myself. <laughs> well, can you give it back week. to us so we can tell <laughs> someone else? Uh, I'd actually like to be in attendance. Thanks. They can that your man from Kinsale can piss off back down. <laughs> um the HWPO then, so I know you and Keith go like way back to, you know, like from running events and all like, you know, they had the, the Loud and Live series when he was there and Madrid and Waterpalooza and all that kind of stuff. And I know there was strong links there. I remember the prize one year was to go over to Waterpalooza and, you know, there's been like 
um a good relationship there is that where that stemmed from that idea of working with hwpo and i i think you sammy was in ireland before as well wasn't she and didn't you didn't you bring her around ireland or something was there something like that no but not a bad idea sammy would be here this time um oh my so, god i must have dreamt that i was sure no, but, <laughs> yeah i think i think uh i think Dorina, you were you you don't even remember this you were pretty close to that happening I, when you, when are you going to bring her to like Kerrygold for a tour yeah, or well, something? Omni, yeah, well, Omnibar, who owned Kerrygold, um, were interested in in when they were here to do a tour. But unfortunately, at that stage, Matt wasn't in a position to come, so she wasn't coming. But okay. when they come here, they will be doing a tour of the area. Um, so it's, uh, I can't. You you easily happened. you easily could have made me believe that I dreamt that that I just that none of that <laughs> happened. Yeah. <laughs> No, in fairness to the hard work pays off team, they, they've been great and um, we reached out and I do have a very strong relationship with Matt, um, we do, He's he's been a great friend, a great supporter, um, he's been really supportive of Irish athletes um, and we initially met for the first time, um, was it six, maybe five, six years ago, um, the Filthy 150 organised for a team to compete at a, a SID competition for WIT. Um, and in that we asked, I think it was PD, Emma and Tyg, um Oh, and Vellner and Keith yeah. did it, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah And yeah. I got Pat Vellner very, very drunk. Um, not that it was most convincing now, and he was competing the next day and he was in bits. But anyway, um, so we, um, that's the first time we met. And obviously, you know, his his parents are um, of originally from Irish origin, his great grandparents, his, his his mother's name was Kathleen. You know, like the, mm. he couldn't be more. He's a big redhead. He couldn't be more Irish. You know, um, so he's been to Ireland loads of times to play golf, etc. You know, so he has that affinity. You know, um, that that others have to Ireland, um, and it um, and from that we worked together. He would have been an, an integral part of looking at what the season was going to look like. That whole sanctional process, and we worked quite closely then. Um, so I reached out to him and uh, told he was aware of the filthy anyway. Um, and they were very excited to come. Um, but they're they're really making a huge effort as a, a brand, um, as a group to be involved and support the community. Now you know it's it's not it's not just a platitude. Really That's the thing. Are... See, I've seen others. I've seen others do it, and it's like tokenism. It's like, yeah, we'll show up. Mm. Like, get, tell us where to stand, and we'll sign autographs, and we'll stand there, and we'll shake hands or whatever. But anything that they've done, like even at Madrid now, like as we speak, or like and they were at the games. They did like even when he was doing the Goldwad stuff, when Matt Fraser was doing the Goldwad stuff before HWPO, and he was just kind of like feeling it out and stuff, starting out. It's literally all in it's never just like yeah okay i'll be there it's like i'll do five hours with fans and i'll do an activation and i'll do a workout for volunteers and i'll do a workout for this and i'll do mm. it's never just like which i guess when you think about it should not surprise anyone that he's not just going to show up and half arse it like that he just, does, well, he just doesn't I mean, have it in him yeah when we were talking to them like you know you're always in that situation uh, darina has this uh amazing ability to get to these people like uh she has been doing it for years now so when we get on the calls you're never quite sure what to expect because some athletes are quite quite removed and quite precious some athletes are very open and very helpful so you never quite know what to ask of them either so we were putting together like right they're gonna come and we gotta put together a plan for them and let's talk to them and we were we had a meeting set up to have the discussion about what the itinerary for the weekend was and i was blown away by the work ethic like the, it and it was really good to see the hard work pays off. Like they're they're saying, like, no, no, we're here to work. We're here to to go and serve the event. We want to meet as many people as we can. We want to go out and make sure that we bring something to to the whole weekend. And uh, they really are like, there's. It's good to see that the values align. That he's talking about hard work, and they're here to work. And all mm -hmm. of them, like the whole team, is coming. And um, that that's just something that impressed me right away. Like they're for real. That's for sure. And yeah. I probably shouldn't say this, but um, we have had other athletes come to us or we've worked with them in the past and you have to pay them significant amounts of money to come to events. And we understand that that's how you make money, you know, um, but the hard work pays off in fairness are not charging us um, to come to our event. 
they want to reach out to the community and they want to support us. And I was absolutely amazed. I'm, I won't tell you who the athletes are, but like we've had athletes say, I'll come if you give us 20,000. Um, I know you've had people ask to be charged on the podcast. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. so I got on the call and um, I was working out, you know, how much can we afford to blah, blah, blah. And um, he, the first thing was, look, we're not trying to, to screw event organizers. We know it's really, really hard to even break even. So um, don't be worrying about a fee. Um, we're, we're there to support you. And I, I couldn't believe it. Now, I have to be honest. I haven't had that kind of genuine support. Um, that's amazing, from, though. From a training that's camp. like, that's, that's, that like fills me up to the brim like that's because again you're talking about values aligning and you're talking about it like <clears throat> the, th the things you know like they, they say they work hard they actually do work hard like uh, like i love i love o'keefe like i like i could listen to him talk for hours i just think the stuff he said but i think the real thing that makes me gravitate towards him is like the first time i talked to him he kept going back to do the right thing for the right reason for the right people. And to hear that story is like, it's literally cold. Like it's ingrained in them that, the, like, like you say, the easy thing to do there is be like, yeah, we'll come, we'll work really hard, whatever, here's our bill. Like, do you know this? Because because it's expected, because yeah. you expect it. So if they had said this much, you there might be a bit of haggling of like, oh geez, I don't know if we can afford that. Or, oh, we're, we're, we were thinking this or whatever. But like, you wouldn't have been shocked if they said, oh yeah, we want, we're going to bring the whole crew and we want like X amount. You wouldn't have been like, oh, uh, what do you mean paid? Like you would have expected to come. And the fact that they knew it was expected and still said, no, like we'll, we'll just turn up. Um, I would have loved to have seen you were like, you know, like had a number written on a piece of paper ready to show. And you're just like, oh yeah, no, that, that suits us. No problem. Like, throwing, <laughs> yeah. throwing it away. Um, well, that's really <clears throat> um, you know, uh, and it just makes us more determined to, you know, to show them a great time in Ireland, yeah. you know, um, and like, and Jamie isn't exaggerating when they said they want to work, you know, um, how many, um, we'll do a seminar, we'll do a fireside chat, we'll do um, training for volunteers, we'll do community workouts. Like, I honestly thought I was expecting, you know, we might get a meet and greet and a sign. Um, I think he's probably going to work harder than the judges at the event. Do you know what I mean? And you know how hard judges work. Um, um, so, Jamie, Jamie, go on then. Give us, give us, so, uh, give us some some idea of what the, what we can expect from them then, and we'll get on to the event itself. But like, say, if I'm going and I'm a big HWPO fan, what can I what can I partake in? What what details can you share? Uh, so we're shoring up the final details at the moment, but uh, there will be an opportunity on the Friday evening to get into a community workout with Matt Fraser. So we're really excited about that. So the Friday evening will be for that. Uh, people can register, the volunteers and athletes. We're going to have the vendor village open. So the Friday evening will be like for everyone who's arriving up to the area who wants to get in and just get a feel for the place. And then if you want to get into a workout with Matt Fraser, there's an opportunity to do that as well. Then on the Saturday, all day, there'll be spectators. Hold on a spectator. second, Jamie Lawler. You cannot not talk about my fireside chat. <laughs> you keep saying, oh, stop yeah. calling it a fireside chat. <laughs> yeah, we don't have a fire. There's no side to it. But, yeah, so, Doreena, go ahead. <laughs> he, he keeps saying, uh, you can't say fireside chat. So basically, um, Justin from Morning Chalk Up will be coming over um, and he'll be sitting down with Matt and talking to him about his life. Um, we, we'd love as many people in the audience uh, as possible to ask questions and find out what it's been like to go from a broken back to the fittest in the world, to have um, Olympic athletes as parents, um, to go from being an engineer now to a global icon of fitness, you know? Um, and I think I look and, you know, you see him being interviewed on, on Joe Rogan and yourself and, um, and other people. And there's always maybe a question that you didn't get, that didn't get answered for you. Um, or something that you'd like to know that maybe relates to you. So we'll have an opportunity then to sit down and, and chat with Matt as a group. Um, and I, I'm really excited about that, you know. Um, and uh, obviously Matt will be there, Matt O'Keefe. Um, so like the workout's important. I think the workout is great. But having the opportunity to sit and hear his story, talk to him about his life and what his plans are, you know, I, I think this is only the start for Hard Work Pays Off. And I'm sure they have some grand plan of, 
where they're going and, and what that's going to look like. And I'd love to know what that is. So um, I'll be asking that question. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I'm excited for to do that. And I know um, Justin from Morning Chalk Up um, has, uh, it has some ideas about how we'd like to do that. So it, it's great that we can bring that to the Irish community and it'll be, you know, it'll be their questions they'll be asking. And I think I mean, we know they're, they're nothing if not honest. <laughs> so I can imagine what they'll ask. <laughs> you know, so I think, I think that's going to be really fun. Yeah, that's cool. You could do one of those, um, you know, like the hobo barrels that you see on like American at train stations in America, you know, you could just have a barrel with a fire in it and then that it's could be your fire side. It's Ireland. I'm going to have a super sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super there, and I'll have a, I'll have Justin Justin toast and uh, a piece of toast with a fork. <laughs> Only Irish listeners will get that. But anyway. Um. Okay. So Saturday then, uh, Jamie. So when everyone's um recovered from the fireside talk, what what can we get then? Yeah. So fa- Saturday will be obviously the the main day of competition. So all the team of four workouts will be happening, um, for the whole day, and alongside that we'll have an area for hard work pays off so so matt will be running spectator workouts throughout the day they'll be probably also meet and greets throughout the day as well so they're going to be there for the day to get give people a chance to get in and just get some contact with them and to to either meet them or to work out with them um and the whole team will be there with them so like if you're if you're coming along on a saturday you should bring your workout gear and um we haven't we haven't fully released how we're going to get access to those yet, but that's coming soon. But there should be loads of opportunities to get involved. That's cool. Um, okay, the competition itself then. I so, know. Oh, uh, oh, one thing one, one thing to add as well. Uh, we've got... Um, so there's a guy... Do you know Harry Pally? Have you ever heard of Harry before? Yeah, yeah. He's like... He was at comp train. He's the reason that they've added all these new athletes, <laughs> like Amanda and all them. Yeah, I'm trying to get him on. Like I'm, I'm grafting there. Yeah, go on. So, yeah, uh, Harry, Harry uh, I've met Harry a few times. I spent some time with him in Boston a few years ago, and yeah, he used to be like the head coach at comp train or the programmer anyway, and he was also the manager across the New England. So, I went over for a few immersion courses over the years, and he always kind of led the course. And then you get plenty of time with Ben Bergeron along the way. But Harry's the guy who brings you through it. And his professionalism is unbelievable. His knowledge is unbelievable. And when I had heard he, he went over to Hard Work Pays Off, we've been in a lot of conversation. And I said to him, he has so much to give to affiliate owners and coaches in terms oh, of leadership good. and um, approach to how, to how to lead in your role, no matter what it is, if you have a role in an affiliate uh that guy is unbelievable so uh, i asked him would he put together a, a seminar for people who are you know in in ireland who coach or who own uh gyms and he's he's more than happy to put something together uh he is so like quiet in the background like pe- people front. like him impressed the shit out of me because like you could name you could say his name to the whole crossfit community and so few people will be like, oh, yeah, I know who he is. Like, n- I think now, since he's joined HWPO, more people will know who he is because it's more, mm-hmm. like, spotlighty or whatever, and he's in pictures and that kind of stuff. But, like, a lot of people would not pick him out of a lineup. They wouldn't know his name. They wouldn't know who he coached, what he did. Like, I think it speaks volumes, the fact that, like, Sam left uh, Comtrain but kept working with him. Uh, Amanda and Catherine and Sam were so keen to work with him that they moved and joined like you know it just speaks volumes a of how good he is but also how humble he is that he's so quiet and like not putting himself out there the way that he could if he wanted to I guess yeah yeah and he he, like just watch it like I got this I got to see him in work and just watching him move around and how he operates it's so impressive And, and humble is the word but then he's just such a high level operator on top of that so uh that guy is unbelievable so I, I can't wait to get him up in front of people uh and just walking them through some leadership things like some simplest concepts um that just really hit home and make a big, big impact like i know for bua like he's made a huge impact just from the stuff i've i've, I've just seen him do and the stuff he's, he's taught me so it's i'm really excited that he's going to do something over here for people uh, so that, wait, what, that's, it, will that be on on the weekend or separate to that or how will that work that would be on the weekend, yeah, at the venue. 
Okay. So we, we're, we're, that'll either be the Friday night or the Saturday. We haven't quite scheduled it, uh, but we will be scheduling it, letting all the affiliates know. Um, and we'll, we'll have a nice room, nice venue for it so people can get in and um, get, get as much information as possible. That's and again, good. that will be included in your spectator ticket or your athlete ticket. Um, what we're trying to figure out is how many box owners are competing. Um, okay, we yeah. know every box owner will be at the event, um, but it's like if they're competing, we'd sooner do it on a Friday night because this is something that we wouldn't want them to miss. Um, yeah. Or maybe we look at doing two, one of a Friday night and one of a Saturday. Um, but uh, yeah, it's um, just listening to himself and Jamie talk. Um, and even Jamie went over and did, I think he went over to him twice uh, to work mm. with him. And uh, I could see the difference that it made coming back, you know, himself. I think Chris went over as well. Um, and uh, yeah, he had a, he, he's had a huge impact on Bill. Yeah. Get him, get him to check his emails if you're talking to him again. <laughs> I'm actually talking uh, to him tomorrow. Um, but this is like the late, late show. This is, it's not tomorrow. It's um... <laughs> yeah, it's, tomorrow is last week. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Wow. Okay. So, okay. So if, you, if, so I'm, if, when I go with my spectator t- ticket, I can expect multiple opportunities to liaise with or engage with the HWPO crew. I can expect what sounds like the best vendor village there's been so far, like the best vendor area there's been so far, I can expect to, you know, bring my rads and my shorts and ready to jump in on a workout. I can also expect to spectate on the event as well. So like, I mean, it's, and if I was a gym owner or someone working in a gym who wanted to, I guess, engage in some CPD, there's a good opportunity there as well. Well, multiple opportunities. I mean, if you talk to any of those people, you're going to improve just like, I feel like just from talking to them, you're going to be like, I'm going to improve. I'm going to work harder. Um, I think for an ad- other thing. Okay. Yeah. God, this is we, great. We haven't announced one person that is coming to the event yet. Dun, 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 dun. And we won't be announcing before Wednesday. Um, uh, the thing is, the reason we're not announcing is I'm hoping I can try and, um, because I, when this person is announced, I expect it to be a huge rush for tickets again. And we're just looking with the venue. Is there any way we can have any more spectators? So, um, yes, yeah, so we'll have someone else coming that, that should excite. Let's put it that way. Okay. Nothing, no, no like male, female, like athlete, like what? Human. No, nothing. Human. Great. Yeah. Oh, Human. So it's not your dog then. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all we've ruled out there. Um, <laughs> I'd, oh, I'd just like to point out that dogs are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So if I was competing then, um, what could I expect there? Like what do we, um, have you got, uh, you know, the layout sorted? Have you got the run of it sorted? Have you got the format, the workouts? Is all of that like finished and nailed in? Testing's all done, all that kind of stuff? Yep, it's all done. Uh, so there will be four workouts. And uh, the the usual uh, format will apply where we're going to have four workout floors. So if you're there uh, spectating, you can go and watch any workout happen. There'll always be a workout going on on all four floors. Um, and you know, if you if you start your first workout at nine a.m., you'll be doing another one at eleven, another one at one, another one at three. So it's it's a very easy format to follow. You know, you're going every two hours. Um, you'll have roughly half an hour time slot for a workout. It could be any length within that, and then you've got an hour yeah. and a half off. And I think it's a nice amount of time that you know you've enough time to recover and eat, uh, but you're not hanging around and getting too cold or too fed up um you know just as you've cooled down you're kind of ramping back up again and that's what i always like about the event that we have we have some momentum to it and before you know it you've gone three or four work it tr- gone three or four workouts and uh you're ready to go home uh so uh that's that would be the the format the the workouts themselves so we've done different divisions before but um the one that's been most successful for us which we continue to do is like the open so we'll have an orex workout for mm. each floor and then when you get to that floor, if you're like, this is like this is beyond my capacity, we're going to do a scaled workout for this floor. Then you'll just get ranked below the RX teams for that floor, but it doesn't mean you have to scale for the whole thing. It means you yeah. can RX, you're a three if you can. So uh, it is like the work, the open that way. And it 
what I like about it is the simplicity of having everybody doing the same workout for the day. Everyone can relate to each other through the workouts. And, um, you know, the, the programming is, you know, it's the same every year. It's the same goals of trying to get the, the best team to win. Um, we should have a workout that when you look at it on paper, you're like, oh, that looks intriguing. And then when you're actually doing it, it's fun to do and it's fun to watch. Like th That's the criteria that I analyze everything by the end. And I think we definitely have that for all four workouts. So um, it should be a fun day. Uh, I think it's going to be like you think about why we did this in the first place. It was to get four people together from a gym and then get the people from that gym around them to support them. Um, and th I mean, that's the bit that I'm most looking forward to is just seeing four people getting together, like leaving it all out on the floor and there are people getting behind them. Uh, it's, it's always unbeatable. Um, are the shackles off a bit when it comes to, say, organizing an event like this? We mentioned, you know, the kind of more grassroots uh, aspect to it or the kind of more traditional filthy aspect to it rather than it being a sanctional or, um, uh, you know, say like if it had been the levels event and you've got like, it, it, do you feel, do you feel more creative freedom when it's something like this or do you feel um like does the pressure excite you of oh the best of the best in the world are going to do this workout and i need to make sure that i can test them and test you know your average gym goer or whatever like do you know what i mean like is, is it is it a different kind of excitement to say doing a sanctional or is it like i guess freer are you are you is it easier to find a state of flow because there's less pressure uh it's definitely not easier um and it, but it's definitely different. Like doing, having the best in the world do it definitely adds an aspect that you can't get anywhere else. And uh, there's a different type of pressure to that. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm painfully aware that, um, that the elites get all the attention. And I'm like, we can't drop 1% standard because it's not the elites. Uh, mm. Do you know what I mean? Like we have to really deliver for everybody who comes along. You want them to come away saying that was the best one yet. It doesn't matter that it wasn't an elite individual competition there. So, I mean, the pressure is just as high. I always think because there's so many people, you don't you don't want to let anyone down. So uh, I don't think the pressure is, has alleviated, but it is different. There's no doubt about that. Um, mm -hmm. and, and like honestly, every year, the top team that wins has always got some elites in it. So there's always that pressure of like I need to test those people at the top because I need like if there's three teams at the top and they all have games athletes in them they need to be able to beat each other. The workouts need to separate them. Hmm. But then also Filthy is one of those events where there are so many people doing their first ever competition at it. And they're all in the same division. <laughs> so the challenge is, can, we, can I program in a way that is really inclusive? It's a real hard test for the top end. But yet the people at the other end still feel like I have an entry into this. So uh, that's so it's it's not really like very free, not a lot of freedom in the programming. It's quite constraining that way. Uh, but that's where the challenge is. That's where it's fun. Hmm. Um, okay. The f I want to talk about this this event that never was. This, uh, the kind of, what would you call it? Like the Formula One format of like the houses. Um, this, you told me about this when I, I think we were in Newbridge, I think. Um, oh, I can't remember where we were. I don't know Selbridge, we somewhere. I think was it Selbridge? Okay, yeah. and we were there, and you said you told me about this, and I metaphorically almost shit my pants. I was like, "This is such a fucking good idea." Um, is there a chance that we could see that again? Like, or or you know the way Dor uh, Dorina was saying that, like, when it doesn't, that every year has to be different. Is that gone? Is that dead now because it didn't happen? Is that technically I can't use that idea again? Definitely not. I think I think these ideas, like it's still a very strong idea. Like you said, like it's I, fucking amazing. <laughs> like I, it yeah. is such a good idea. Like it's so good. It's incredible. Uh, and as well, like even I was taught. I interviewed Cockler a few weeks ago. Um, and he was really supportive in fairness. He was Justin. like he was like he was oh it. he was like we were right there. Like and he was like he was like that was a fucking good idea. He was like we were right there. And he was like, I, I'm just waiting for the word. Like he was like, that was, that was mm. going to be epic. 
Um, cause it, 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 it gave fans an opportunity to get on board with a team. And I thought that was the, the best bit of it. Like there are, you know, all of those different training camps have their own character and their own uh, feel to them. And it just really appeals to different people. And I just think the opportunity for people to get on board with a team and say, no matter what athletes are on it, they're my team. And then you start building connection with the athletes that, that get on that team. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just thought uh, as, a, as a way of, of building a new type of connection to the sport, I think it's, it's still a really strong concept. Now, I'm not going to lie, talking to the teams about it, it's not easy about getting people together. And we had a lot of work to do in that week, but we got really far down the road on it um, to the point where we had the team signed up. We had an event sorted. And I think what would have happened was we would have run that event with multiple teams. And then the, the, the teams who weren't involved would have been like, we're in on that. We just, they just needed to see it up and running. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I still love the idea. Um, and I know Darina loves it too. Darina is the type of person who can make it happen, honestly. Um, and I, uh, I don't think it's dead, uh, but it's just not this year. Yeah, because it's there's an aspect of there's an element of drive to survive about it. There's an element of you know, like I have no fucking clue about Formula One, but I hate Red Bull. <laughs> do you know, like, and you get that, I'm like, so where you're like, you. do you know, like, and, and it's just that I think was the it, concept. To yeah, and it gives it gives that like, oh, like you could you can picture like the think tank t-shirts and the under you can picture everything and how you know like that you might have say one or maybe two like hyper recognizable names on a team and then to be someone who you may you know like you could have uh fucking ricky gerard and alex gazan but then you might have someone like kyra who people are like oh who's she or, you know like you could have that yeah. element to it as well like the kind of not rookie but like you know the, the newcomer coming in that could you know gain their experience of a competition and stuff like there's so many like uh different sides to it but like oh please well the, the, the top was to have like a, a first division and a second division so each camp would bring two teams yeah. you know um and uh very much and a series of going to multiple events like you know drive to survive i can't i can't imagine though that uh maybe you don't want to answer this but i can't imagine hq being very supportive of it because it, does that give power to does that give more power to the training camps than it does to the sport or to the organization proper do you know what i mean i think anything um that involves a series or a collective of events may be difficult yeah. for, for, for hq you know um and i understand that um but in terms of the the concept they were very supportive of us they okay. they didn't push back at all um and Winnie, my dog, is supportive. Um, so they were they, they were very supportive of it. But um, who knows, you know, um, what would with, have with, happened. With that then, with like just you mentioned series and stuff, and that's something that I kind of, that is something that I thought was going to happen, like straight away when semifinals were announced. I expected the off season to turn into a series. I expected like the Diamond League of CrossFit. I expected like you go to Dubai, you get points. You go to filthy you get points you that there's a, a you know a, a four or five month long competitive window outside of the games and outside of the open season where that you go get points earn money make appearances all that kind of stuff and they'll, they'll all be linked or that like you know straight away in my head i was like okay filthy are good with keith keith at the time was with loud and live so i was like all right you're looking at waterpalooza filthy 150 madrid you know like that was my thought process um and it hasn't happened. So is that does that speak to what you're talking about? That HQ be like, no, oh, no, you're not. <laughs> you're you're not yeah, syndicating in, against in us. Fairness, the, the triple crown, which was the, what they were talking about. I don't know what I'm allowed to say that word, um, but they were talking. I think it was out in Morning Job Cup anyway. Um, that they were looking at three three events to do an off season. You mm. had to you had to pitch for it. Um, and I I think it maybe fell down because you know there, there's big personalities there's big companies you know um who goes first who crowns the champion etc yeah, you know yeah. um so and like in fairness rogue is different than any of us um you know they're an incredible company and they have like them spending what what we would spend on a, an event is their budget for you know 
gift bags for, <laughs> for the athletes attending. The, like, whatever it was, the for, the fitted cowboy boots or whatever last yeah. year. Yeah, that was the I, expense I think, of yeah. that, yeah. I think I heard they spent on their event something like three and a half million. Now, I think their turnover, uh, their after-tax profit turnover was like 138 million um, last year. So you're talking about maybe three or to five percent of their revenue they're spending on a huge marketing event for them, you know? Well, you know, Jamie, what the answer is there. You need to change that number from six to 60. And you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know and it's also like, you know, you can't, they're, they're freaking CrossFit, you know, yeah. like real terms. So you, you can't compete with that. Uh, I remember one athlete saying to us, and very nice, but they were talking about our event and, you know, coming to us and said, well, can, can you not just give us some of the spectator money? like rogue do and it's just like no we need that to actually pay for the lights <laughs> to turn on the building you know? yeah we can do it but you'd be working out in the dark <laughs> yeah, you know, so, like, uh, so it's it's just it's not apples with apples you know and again yeah. obviously um what a palooza is a huge event backed by a huge company you know of what of the 26 sanctionals i may maybe there was maybe four or five who would have those kind of resources like, mm. you know, um, Dubai, et cetera, you know? So it's, um, it's difficult. I do think there is, there's, there is something that can be done in the off season. I think that's something that can live very comfortably alongside and help the sport grow, not compete with CrossFit, um, their season. Um, but you know, all I can say for us anyway, um, anything we went to CrossFit with, in terms of postseason, they've been supportive of the levels mm. championships, the team series, they've, they yeah, I mean, we we have we have worked with we have talked to other events about series like we've done that a lot, we've explored it extensively, and as Doreen said, we've talked to CrossFit about it, and they they're really open to all these ideas. Yeah, mm. So it's it's definitely these sort of things are are, are possible to happen. Okay, um, the future then. So if we look at, you know, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but we'll assume this year is going to be a roaring success, and we look at twenty twenty three. Are we? anticipating a potential return to Punchestown and uh uh move back i guess more closer to what we had with the sanctions season those kind of plans do you think well Punchestown is booked um so okay uh, once there's not another wave or, or of lockdowns or whatever we're good <laughs> yeah we're, we're good so yeah i would expect that there'll be some change um who knows what's going to happen you know even with the series itself you know the CrossFit game season the you know um honestly we, we've uh we've prepared for four different events since our last one <laughs> we've had a full ramp up with the team had the weekly calls done the whole the whole the whole thing you know um and then you know you hit a certain point where you're like oh well that's not gonna be possible because of lockdowns venues uh whatever else so um at this point we definitely know what we're doing in October <laughs> and then and then we're going to do that and then we're going to really reassess but i mean definitely the plan is for for next year if we go back to punch us down that we'll look at you know building upon what we do this year with more exciting divisions and whatever else we can do but uh it, you know once once we're excited by it that's the main thing like we have to get an idea that we really get fired up about so uh we always right after the event sit down and have a good think about it and uh get planning yeah, I think to be honest with you, Peter, we're probably our own worst critics. So, like, because after an event, we sit down and we pull it apart, like we really do. And I, I, I admire greatly. You see some other, and not even in CrossFit, some other event organizers, and you know they, they can take the the pluses and say, yeah, we did a really good job. Like for some reason, myself and Jamie and the Filthy team don't seem to be able to do that. And um, like even after you know, um, the the 2019 sanction i remember us all thinking we did this wrong we did that wrong you know and then you, you just don't say well the live stream was really good we'd really big athletes there people really enjoyed themselves you know so i'm hoping that we'd learned that you know maybe to enjoy what's really good about it and not do such a like obviously we have to do a deep dive after it but not be so hard on ourselves let's put it that way um because it you, you are in front of everyone you know and uh, that's hard um, very much like as you said social media so mm. um that's that's difficult that deep dive you know and um work are you at are things like ramping up now into like proper intense period of like getting shit ready and all that kind of stuff or are you still in that kind of weird phase where you're like should we be doing something like is this this is a bit too quiet 
No, no, definitely not. Uh, no, it's full steam ahead. And in fairness, like every year has been interesting. Seven Arena kind of take uh, different roles in it every year. Um, I don't know this year, Doreen has been the driving force. So she's been much busier than I have. I've been busy in the gyms. Um, so my jobs are now really ramping up and uh, Doreen is only going to get busier from here on in. So the two of us are full steam ahead now. The team is all ramping up as well. So it's it's now getting to that time where you need to get everything in place. So uh, it's, it's uh, going to be six weeks of nonstop. Yeah. I'm... I know I obviously sounded very excited for that uh, team series event, but I'm incredibly excited for this, like for very different reasons. Like I was excited for that because of the the scale of it and the epicness and the kind of story aspect and all that kind of stuff. But I'm excited for this because like Doreen, you mentioned earlier on that it's the kind of the day in the calendar where you're like, oh, we'll all get together. That this this is years waiting for this day in the calendar. Do you know what I mean? It hasn't It hasn't spun around. Like it's, we've just flown past it so many times. I'm so excited to see how like Matt, Matt and the crew, like what they do and how they do it. Um, I just cannot wait. I can't wait to just have it back and on and everything. And yeah, like, thanks for coming on to talk about it and best of luck with the next six weeks and all the prep for it and everything. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's really fucking exciting. Well, thanks yeah, for having us, Peter, and for all the support over the years. And yeah, you know, um, you've been a you've been a big part of it too. Yeah, well, a little part, but I'll, I'll take it. 